So one time in 2011, 2012 in China, I saw a hoodie that I tried to get Jen to buy. And on this hoodie, it was pink and it had big black block lettering, um, P-R-B-L-M across the upper chest, P-R-B-L-M. And then across the belly, S-L-V-R-S. P-R-B-L-M-S-L-V-R-S, Problem Solvers. So one of Jen and I's many, many wonderful inside jokes is when we fix something or we want to figure something out is we say, Problem Solvers. Problem Solvers. And I say, should have bought that, should have bought that hoodie. Should have bought that hoodie. It was a Uh, little too small for me. And so I didn't, I held it up and it was, it was either a cropped sweatshirt or it was just not my size. Yeah. But, um, I don't know if anyone wants to, I don't know, glow forge or print one of those or whatever you call it. The, I, I'd buy one. Problem today. solvers. I'd buy one today. Problem solvers. Welcome back. I'm Jen. This is David. And we are. Team Carter Family Adventures. Jen, you had two things you wanted to talk about tonight. What was it? Um, we were going to talk about, um, the joys of home ownership and dealing with um, pest problems. So, <laughs> what's the craziest pest problem you've ever had? The craziest pest problem you've ever had. In home ownership. Uh, why this came up today is so we live in a house that's built in 1952. That makes this home 80, ancient, 80 or some odd years old. Is, is that right? Am I doing that math right? 70, 73. Years. It's built in 52. It's now 2022. Yeah. So 52, 62, 72, 82, 92. 70-year-old house. 2002, 60. Yeah. It's 70-year-old. It's 70 years old this year. Wow. Good job, house. Good job. And it's an old mill home. It's been added on to once or twice. And uh, it's a kind of unique little craftsman. Anyway. It's so charming. Um, we love our house. It's a very charming little home, but we love it. One of the things about owning an older home, the person who owned our, our home before us took really good care of it and did a bunch of updates and upgrades to it, and we're so appreciative of that, and we've continued that. Um, but one of the things about owning an older home is that uh, it's a little bit like having a classic car. Uh, you are going to be one of the coolest kids in school, one of the coolest kids in town, but on some mornings, However, the car is just not going to start. It's going to require some extra TLC, and an older home is no different. Uh, the systems are older, just needs extra love and care. Uh, so one of the things that you got to be aware of are pests. So we had a mouse in our in our. Um, Crawl space. Crawl space. But we didn't know this. All we knew is that there was a certain odor. It was an odor in the crawl space. It was odiferous, if you could say that. And uh, so we went looking. We had a suspicion. We had a, our, our, our pest guy had set some traps down there. And so we smelled something smelled pretty bad. And sure enough, we kept looking, kept looking, kept looking. And we found the offending dead mouse. So, Jen, tell the story about the... Uh, um about the squirrel that got into our house oh time. okay so that so today we found a dead mouse it was already dead so i love your volume right now by the way really absolutely oh, great. so one of the things for we tell the story long-time listeners of the podcast might know that we've been going back and forth with some of our audio issues trying to get jen's voice louder i naturally speak i guess quieter than david however i think we figured out the problem we just switched so we're this is so we're super high tech here, of course, and we're actually recording on one set of AirPod Pros. I have the left AirPod, Jen has the right AirPod. Uh, before I had the right AirPod, and she had the left AirPod, and our voices, the levels were uneven. But now, drastically different. You can go back and listen to the last episode, episode ten, and you'll be like, "Whoa, day and night comparison." But I think we, I think we got it figured out. I think out we now. have all of our technical difficulties sorted out. So thank you for bearing with us for that. Anyway, um, so this one time. Um, when we lived in Charleston, <clears throat> also some older homes in Charleston, but um, we just lived in this really cool neighborhood, got to live behind my grandparents. It was a spectacular um, season of just living and raising very small babies um, in that house. It was a very good season. Um, however, uh, it does flood in Charleston, so if you didn't know this, every time it rains, the water level rises and it seems to like, you know flood your garage even when you have a couple inches of rain so 
Um, I think one time, I can't remember if it rained, but we were definitely moving um, some things. Were we going on a trip? I can't remember where we were going, but we were. It, it consisted of us packing things out of the house and putting it in the car. And in doing so, we left the garage up while we were, you know, taking stuff in and out of the garage door or whatever. Um, and as you do when you're leaving your house to go away for the weekend, like we were kind of rushed to go because you got, you know, you can't leave kids sitting in the car um, for a long time. And so we're just like throwing things in the car and we packed it up and we, you know, hightailed it out of there wherever we were going um, for the weekend. And we come back and something was like, a miss, you know, like something we, was off. We got back inside. In, we got house. back at night, and so you know the kids are tired. It, it was like past their bedtime, so we're like, okay, first things first, we're gonna we're gonna go in. We're probably gonna unpack the car later. We're just gonna go in and like put the kids down into bed. Well, I, we're like carrying the kids inside, and it was like things were slightly askew, slightly askew, but not like. Not like someone's robbed their house, but just things were off. Like, I couldn't describe it. Things felt off. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to put the kids down or do anything until we figure out what is what is in our house. So we're, we're going through the house. We're turning on every single light. We're, like, shouting, like, hello, like, because you just never know. And um, we get back to the kids' room, and the thing that really sets me off, thinking, like, okay, it's an animal somewhere in the house or something, is um, because the girls had, like, a little, one of those little Fisher-Price, um, like, My First Doll Houses or whatever, and that thing was shredded, like, little plastic dollhouse and the thing is like in pieces and then I look at the girls blinds and the blinds look like there's been a cat in the blinds or something like it is completely thrashed thrashed. just one of them and so I'm like huh so then um, we're going around the house and I'm like you know we didn't really have anything of (laughs) of super value so I'm like well, no, nobody took anything. There's not furniture missing. There's nothing missing. Um, that's weird with the blinds. Like, some trying to jump out just one window and mess up one blind. Like, I'm so confused. And we start going through the house, and I hear this, like, fast moving. So I'm thinking, like, there's a rat in here. This is disgusting. Somehow there's, like, a rat in here. Um, and it didn't necessarily smell bad. It's just, I was like, what is that noise? So I'm like, not going to put the kids to sleep in that. So we're all crowded in the living room. And then I see it. Um, We go to, like, put something on the couch. And this giant squirrel that's alive runs to the other couch and, like, disappears under it. (laughs) And I, like, me and the kids are screaming on top of the couch. Because what you don't realize when you watch a squirrel in your yard is how fast... It really is unbelievably fast when it's trapped in a in a twelve by twelve quick. foot room. Like, and you our can't den, even really tell. You can just barely even tell what it is. And our so den fast. was long and skinny. It was, it was like a skinnier room, more than it was wide, and so it really felt like this thing was like flying all over the room, like running as fast as it could, trying to get under stuff. So I called a David. I think we got a broom. What weapon of choice did you get? We weren't trying to kill it. We were just trying to, like, we were trying to shoo it outside or do something. So we open up all the doors. We're trying to keep it contained in the living room. And um, I don't know how we got it out, but we got it out because I was not letting anyone leave the living room or go to bed until we caught that thing and it was out of our house. Um, And we did find, you know, I think we cleaned up after that. We, You know, then we're all so tired, but I was like, well, now we can't sleep in, like, you know, squirrel feces or whatever, squirrel touch. So I felt like we went into, like, mad cleaning mode, and we went to bed at, like, midnight because we were trying to, like, now we got to deep clean the house and get the squirrel out of here. It was crazy. So that's the craziest, like, pest control problem I've ever had. You know, I, I heard Jen speak languages that night but i didn't know that she knew oh yeah um <laughs> spoke in unknown tongues yeah uh words that i didn't know that she knew how to say <laughs> <laughs> um 
what's what's so good about that is that our problem solvers we problem solve that solvers. problem <laughs> what's so good about that is that our jen's grandparents uh have have a really good story about a squirrel that was drunk on varnish yeah. that was harassing them allegedly and it just seemed to fit in so well um so that's that's the squirrel story that was when we were dating we went up to the mountain house with them and had dinner and they cooked us dinner and they were telling us about how yeah they left like they'd re they'd re-varnished um like some furniture or something on the porch and the crazy mountain squirrels had like eaten the wood that he had just varnished and so they got drunk off whatever <laughs> i don't know drunk or high off whatever varnish he had and so they were acting loopy on the porch and they were telling the story about how they looked over and Grammy screamed because there was a um, there was a giant squirrel hanging upside down on the screen that was going crazy because it was high on the varnish that had eaten hours before, something like that. And yeah. so they were also trying to get it off the porch. So, yep, yeah. Welcome to the Carolinas. We got crazy squirrels. Oh, apparently, crazy squirrels. So, apparently. thankfully, it was not a squirrel up under our house. Yeah, but a dead mouse. Yeah. Uh, so we got that going for us, but, um, yeah, so we did some, 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 uh, updating on our YouTube channel and our, and our blog as well this, this past week, just because we really haven't messed with it. We designed it in a year or so. But you can find us at teamcarter.team. Teamcarter.team. Yeah, that, that, that is a domain that we have. Um, so that is pretty cool. Uh, and the, really the, the point of the, 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 of the, of the blog is really just to have a, um, another point of contact because it redirects back to the podcast or redirects back to the YouTube channel. There, there, there's some text updates on there, but people don't really read a lot of blogs anymore. Um, so it's just a kind of another point of contact redirect back to our content. Um, let's share one of our moms. Hi mom. <laughs> Hi Julie. Hi Kathy. We know you're listening. Our moms you or, listening. or grandmothers, if you if you read our stuff, wonderful. Thank you so much. We love you. Um. So those are the two things we want to talk about: um, home maintenance. So you know, we uh, bought this house three years ago, and uh, first time homeowners. Um, I had been selling had been selling real estate for. Three years at that point, and so I, 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 I had a pretty good sense of what the process was and kind of what I was getting into. And um, you know, going back, I would not do anything different. But I just think you know, you know more. Um, just the whole classic car analogy is so apt because you know I've helped people buy other kinds of homes, and uh, it's just hard. You're almost guaranteed for there to be something something wrong with it when a home is this old maybe it's insignificant maybe it's something you can live with maybe it's something that's even fixable there's just going to be something um so just don't don't be surprised it's not going to be a perfectly it's not a brand new it's not going to be like a brand new house because it's not a brand new house so it's part of the charm part of the charm. Part of the charm. you don't get the character you don't get the charm of an older home without some of the headaches I'll put it that way. Not that there have been any massive headaches with this house, because there haven't. But we have done a significant amount of work to it. But and it's a and it's a debate, you know. Do we do we do more work? Uh, do we kind of keep doing what we're doing? Just stopping me because I'm scratching my belly. Um, so I hope if that comes through on on audio, I don't know. But that's what that noise is. I'm scratching my belly. Woo! Excuse me, I'm yawning. What else did you want to talk about? That was a big thing. Um, I was thinking more about... <laughs> I'm going to keep mentioning this road trip thing until we go on it. All right, do it. I was thinking more about that today. In case you haven't joined us before this episode, we, we are planning going a big summer road trip. To? The, the Grand, Grand Canyon. Yeah. And bum, bum. we're not flying. We're putting that weird looking thing on top of our van 
our minivan, Honda Odyssey, the miniest of vans. And we're loading up all the kids. And we're driving out west. Now, Arizona or bus. Arizona or bus. Now, we don't, we don't do, and this is just our, just our personal preference. We don't do screens for our kids. Maybe we will after this trip. You'll have, <laughs> we will on you'll this trip. You have to tune in and wait and see. Maybe the curtains finally crack. We will on this trip. Huh? If anything, we'll do it every six days in the car. Um, you know, maybe we'll get back from this trip and say, I, I never want to go on another road trip with you people again. <laughs> uh, who knows? But we're going to try it. So we haven't really decided dates yet. It'll probably be the end of June. July, of course, the hottest possible time of year. Of course. So we'll see. Maybe we'll spend July 4th in the Grand Canyon. You never know. David has wonderful memories of his childhood, of, um, in particular, going on summer road trips in his car that had wet leather seats in it or something. <laughs> yeah. And being a sweaty child and having his legs stick to the seat and how miserable that was. Yeah, I, don't, so you know, we... I really feel like we're just going to pass that on. We had, uh, uh, I do remember going on long road trips in the summer, and we had an Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra, a giant, well, all right, so at first it was an Oldsmobile 88, <laughs> uh, just a huge boat of a car with a big back seat, big, you know, big bench seat up front and back, and there was, it was five, one, uh, four kids, two, six of us in an adult 88, Oldsmobile, in an Oldsmobile 88. And then when we got a little older, we graduated into the Cutlass Sierra. It was a burgundy red Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra. I want you to stop what you're doing and Google that right now. Burgundy red Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra, like uh, mid to early 90s. And that's what it was. We went on so many road trips in that thing. And uh, I just remember, you know, it's how it's... It's the underdog of vehicles. It's the underdog like, of vehicles. It just keeps going. By the way, my 80-year-old grandmother still has one and drives it. It's right now, one. yeah, it's, it's it's blue or silver. I can't remember. Um, it's pretty great. Whatever. Um, it's pretty great. Still has one. Still drives it. And uh, we actually found it. So she had one, and it was falling apart. But we found one that somebody had had garage kept. I mean, this thing is in like mint condition. If this thing was a classic car, this would be an incredible find. Uh, mint mm -hmm. condition find, and we got it. It's basically the exact same model the car. she had. Wow. Yeah, and but anyway. Because she knew where everything was. So she, she knew just yeah. keep on, and keep it was on. not a challenge for a drive at all. It was perfect. But so we, so we take these long road trips, and I just had really very fond memories of that. And we took a long road trip last summer, and the kids really loved it. And we really loved it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do this summer. Um, so we'll see. We were debating, you know, should we join AAA? Um, we decided no, because our insurance that we have should, should, should cover all that, so we should be okay. And, uh, yeah, so we'll... If there's any points of interest um, that you feel like we should stop and see on a route from, say, Rock Hill, South Carolina, to the Grand Canyon um, in Arizona, please let us know. Email us at... TeamCarterFamilyAdventures at gmail.com. Or look us up on Facebook, also at Team Carter Family Adventures mm -hmm. Or Instagram hashtag Team Carter Family. And or YouTube. Or YouTube, Team Carter Family Adventures, yeah. Or Smoke Signal. Or Carrier Pigeons. Or... Let's bring back Carrier Pigeons. Or Morse Code. Or Morse Code or Ham Radio Frequency 147.030. <laughs> offset of 5%. There <laughs> you go. Ham Radio. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, but yeah, so we're excited about that. Still finalizing dates for that. And, um, I don't know. If you want to meet us at the Grand Canyon, let us know. You don't, so, have, you don't have to drive there, but yeah. you can, you can We're not there. asking you to ride with us for six days in the car. No, you probably don't uh, want that. But you can meet us there. We, we do this thing, and maybe this is not unique to us, I don't know. Um, but we do this thing where we like to do things with people. Yeah, it's fun. Um, it's called having friendships with people. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like it's some incredible thing. We like to do things <laughs> with people. So, just because it's more fun. So, you know, if, if anybody wants to meet us at the Grand Canyon, a lot of fun to be had. There's a red-headed four-year-old you can chase around. Um, we won't be chasing him around. We're going to buy him one of those, like, harness Yeah, let's talk things. about that. We got him a leash, one of those kid leashes. We got him a kid leash because I just, if you've ever been to the Grand Canyon, you know that you can't even see the bottom of it. When you look into it, it's kind of crazy. Your mind just doesn't fathom how 
grand it actually is. And so, um, yeah, I saw other parents there with their, their t mostly toddlers and small children on leashes, just if their kids are unable to stop when you yell stop. And so one of our children is unable to do that. So I'm not going to have anyone fall in. Little. People just fall in every year and it just, it's yeah. terrifying to think it's about. It's pretty incredible. So. You know, Last time Jen and I was two years ago now, three years ago, two years um, ago. Two years COVID, ago, yeah. 2020. 2020. Last time Jen and I went. Um, Our anniversary trip. Jen, it was great. Jen kind of had a hard time enjoying the Grand Canyon because she was so concerned about the people being so close to the edge. Oh, my God, yes. So many people were so close we to the edge. We took a total of, are you ready for this, two pictures at the Grand Canyon because – well, it was. I didn't want to yeah. film because there were a lot of people. A and two. It was ridiculously and crowded. Yeah. It, it was crowded for for being like you know quote unquote a COVID spike. It was crowded, and um, <laughs> which we went because we'd already booked this trip, and I was like, yeah, we're going. Um, but yeah, so it was crowded, and I wanted to make sure you have to walk along the the rim trail of the that just kind of goes around. It's like a bike path. Um, but it was kind of crowded and people were like walking off the bike path, jumping over rocks, like in the Canyon. And I was like, this is crazy. And, um, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure they were okay. And it made my anxiety raise up a little bit because I was very concerned for everyone's safety. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know. Just be safe people. <laughs> Their rules are for By the way, somebody I work with said that we can avoid Roswell, New Mexico. So we don't what? Need, really? So we don't need to go there. Really? It's not that. It's not that impressive. That was like that's your like dream from a kid, though, right? Like, I mean, I mean, it's your dad's. I dream mean, Roswell like, would be cool, Roswell. but you know, if we gotta, if we gotta cut something, if we have to cut something, I'm just saying. Do we do the most direct route, which is like going through? What like Memphis and taking whatever interstate that is? That interstate seventy Let's what is see. that? That is the most direct route. Because there is I forty that goes through Oklahoma, North Carolina, right, and goes like from North Carolina to Arizona. But I don't know if that passes through Texas. And really, the only reason why we wanted to pass through Texas is because we've never been to Texas. So I feel like. You know, that could be cool. Experience what everyone else experiences yeah. of like three days later, we're still driving in Texas. The most direct route goes through. Yeah, it's. Is it Memphis? No, it's 85. Where we are, the most direct route goes 85 to Atlanta, to Birmingham, then up to Memphis, right. up to Memphis to 40, through Arkansas, Arkansas. through Oklahoma. And we're going to be within shouting distance of Fayetteville. Just saying. We're going to ride through Fort Smith. Our dear friends have had a wonderful new baby. Yay! So we're not going to like beat down their door and have a baby come that. crash. Because that would be incredibly rude. I'm not going to do that. But we'll um, wave to you from the interstate. There's Oklahoma City. Then through Amarillo in Texas. Uh, then through ABQ, New Mexico. There's just so many, much cool stuff we want to see out west, and we really just because of a time crunch, we really have to just like say no if if the goal is the Grand Canyon, yeah, because we just don't have a month, unfortunately, to like spend driving around. As unbelievably cool as that would be, I mean that sounds incredible. Maybe next time, but this trip I think is going to be. 10 to 12 days. So if you if you have any suggestions of what we can do in 10 to 12 days around those areas, I, that's, that's, that's you, because Roswell was like your thing. It was like you and your dad's thing, and now it's like. I'm a big fan of sci-fi. Um, if, if you've listened to multiple ones of these, you can, one of the things about our personality, well, not our personality, but just my personality, is that we tend to fixate on things. I, mean, I just tend to fixate on things, mm -hmm. and I just focus on one thing for for a period of time, and that might be. Let me get it out of our system. Six weeks, it might be six months, yeah. but then I move on. Let's look at this loose example. Well, past example, uh, like chickens was a thing. Chickens, yeah. That's like the classic example we use. And then. It was a good run for two years. Yeah, that was a good run. 
and she then, comes uh, happily retired with her brother-in-law. They're not dead. They're still. They actually alive. started laying again. He said. Good. Um, ham radio. That's still a thing I'm doing. Ham radio. Yeah. Still a thing I'm doing. Uh, kind of comes and goes. Biodiesel. Biodiesel was a thing there for a minute. Yeah. I was all about biodiesel there for a minute. Um, um, exploring our options with campers. Campers. We were all about campers. We got that out of our system, though. We were, like, like legitimately got that out of our system. Well, you know what? I can really appreciate that, like, there's Outdoorsy, which is an app for... Yeah. Let's it's talk just... about that, because that's, that's okay. a good little nugget we can share with people. Okay. All right. So, if you so... are thinking of, do I want to buy a camper? Maybe you just have this itch that you want to scratch. You've always wanted a camper. We did, for life. We did. A good two, three years. We did. We seriously considered it. But maybe you feel all our options. maybe you feel a little hesitant about dropping twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars on a mobile home, right? Especially if um, you don't know you're gonna love it. Especially if you don't know if you're gonna love it. So we felt the same way. So what we did was found an app called Outdoorsy. This podcast is not sponsored by Outdoorsy. However, However Outdoorsy, Outdoorsy if you are listening, we would love to be sponsored by you. Um because we think your app's amazing. So what we did was uh we Man, this would be a good. This would be a good sponsored ad. This would be a good. We should record this and send this to them. Um, Are we not recording right now? No, I'm just saying we should. Oh, okay. We, we should trim out this part. We should. <laughs> <laughs> what have we been talking about for the last hour and a half? So with this app, you can rent an RV. Rent a really nice RV for a you know week at a time or whatever, and it costs nowhere near as much as it would cost to buy it. So, we rented three, three separate RVs. Mm -hmm. So we we did a total of four times, and we rented one RV twice. Yeah, um, same guy. From, from the same guy because it was a good experience. It was a good size. It was just it was just really nice, and we spent a total of about four thousand dollars over the course of two. Year and a half. Or it so. was about nine hundred dollars to a thousand dollars with taxes and fees, and, and you paid for gas to fill the thing back up mm -hmm. before you um, take it back. And so, about nine hundred bucks for what three days total? Yeah, three four days. Depends three on the size days. of the one you do. We did a smaller one for five days, and then and then a larger one for for three days. Mm -hmm. Um, but so we, if we would have bought. The cheapest RV that we rented would have, would have been thirty thousand dollars, right? To, well, to buy it. you can find cheaper ones, but then drivable, like legit. Oh, we're talking about drivable. Yeah, okay. or the ones that we got. Okay. These are RVs. You're drivable class B RV. Oh, the ones that we rented. Yeah. Yes. The yes. cheapest one would have been twenty five, thirty thousand uh, dollars. We spent four thousand to figure out that. Um, we don't really enjoy dumping the tanks and messing with it as much as we thought because you can still go on or at least right now we're in the stage of you can still get a lot of hotel rooms or other accommodations for forty thousand dollars or less forty thousand dollars that's a lot, is of, hotel a lot of hotel rooms or a lot of airbnb stays a lot or a lot of stays. stay for free at your friend's house mm -hmm. stays. Mm -hmm. um but you know, coming from a home where my parents did have a camper for the majority of my life, and they switched around to like a couple different like pull behind campers. Um, I mean, it was nice to have it, and we were camping maybe like five times a year, maybe. Um, I think my parents might be able to go a little bit more just because they're both retired now, so they can actually get up and go more. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was great. It was great fun. It, I think it's just, you just got to figure out with your family, what do you want to, how do you want to take trips? And for us, it was like, I we, we didn't necessarily want to go hang out at a campground for a week. We just want to, you know, get up and go. And we got a really good taste of that when we went boondocking in Arizona for our anniversary trip. That's true. Um, we had a really cool experience, and I do appreciate the West Coast for this. That if there's, um, what is it called? Basically, like public lands. You're allowed to pub park on public land. Um, so, like out in the desert, 
if nobody's around and it's public land, you can just pull the camper over or car or whatever you have and spend the night. It's great. We don't have anything like that over here. We were looking up if you could do that on the Blue Ridge Parkway. No, you cannot. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They will they will tow your whatever you have and they will tell you to move. Um, you can't park overnight in the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, so yeah, I don't know. So for us right now, tent camping works well for scout outings and um, we just decided we're gonna drive this thing in our Honda Odyssey, so. Also with the cost of, we did experience this, with a drivable RV, you really have to pay attention to like the cost of gas, especially if said camper is not a diesel. Cost of fuel. Is ridiculous. Do not sleep if on the you, cost of fuel. If you have been under rock and haven't realized the cost of fuel right now. But um, anyway, so just, just things to weigh out for your next trip. Um, and the cool thing is that you can you can try out different people's RVs, campers, um, and if you like it, then that would be a great um, way to see what works for your family. And if it doesn't work, you're like, well, we only tried it for a weekend. Perfect. Let's get something smaller or bigger or whatever whatever your needs are. So. And while you know it's not incredibly cheap, it's a pretty cheap vacation for a family. Um, oh yeah, it's cheaper than like a beach house. It's cheaper than a beach house, and if if you're thinking about it, and they have the app has more, and there's more apps than that too. Sure. Um, there's RV Share. There's RVZ. It's like uh, R V E Z Z Y. It's pretty much the same thing, but they have pull behinds. Um, and you can get they with insurance and, packages and yeah, the whole thing, roadside yeah. assistance. Not, not that we had issues, but if you were to encounter issues. Get covered. Yeah. Um, we encountered no issues at all. Yeah, it was great. We had really good, I mean, with all of them, we had really great customer service. And... I saw, I just got an ad, and th th this is a classic example of Facebook targeted marketing just being absolutely deadly. Oh, here we go. Say. Here we go. What came up? I got an ad. These people know me for it's Ray Bans, but it's smart Ray Bans, smart glasses. It's got built-in like Ray-Bans. This is not an ad for Ray-Bans. I won't say the name of it, but there's a special kind of Ray-Band. Um, oh man, it's 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 like a Google a Google Glass. It's like a cool pair of Wayfarers, but there there's a camera in it. It plays music to your ears, uh, like you can give it voice commands. That is so stinking cool. I'm gonna bring you back down to reality. Oh, that's there's so three cool! Three small children that would grab okay. those jokers, and throw them in the yard, or that's so step cool. on them, or like fight over them, and they would just break in your hands. That's so, so cool! I'm gonna have to watch a YouTube video on that. I'll watch a cool YouTube video later. And we capture every adventure while staying in the moment. That's the Wayfair way. Let's see from the. Uh, 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 can I drink tea? Where's wearable tech? That's right for the best of your phone with Thomas Frame. I don't know why. I got a big head, so it's a five megapixel dual five megapixel camera. Tech control. Pause your phone, take a photo, record a video on the single touch. A hyper responsive touch pad and capture button. Discreet open ear speakers allowing you to seamlessly switch between talks, taking a call, and ordering a coffee. Two built in microphones capture sound in all directions to get rich voice and sound quality. That's so Charging case, Facebook as an, as an app. Oh, camera. No, I'm going to try it. 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 i Dude, it's only got eight reviews, three and a half stars on average. That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. There. But you know what is a good sign? If you have done any sort of problem solving this week, pat on the back. We might make you a sweatshirt um, that says problem solving. That is a fantastic idea, Jennifer. Yeah. 
Oh, I love that idea. Merch. Mm-hmm. Team Carter merch. Problem solvers. Oh, my, my problem solvers. Oh, 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 that's a good idea. If you would like to be a beta, yes. if you'd like to be a beta tester or an ambassador to oh. said Team Carter merch, please drop us an email. I love you so much. Um, at Team Carter Family Ventures at gmail.com. And we will get back with you if we actually print off said sweatshirts. I want one for sure because I regret from 12 years ago not buying that super tiny sweatshirt. I, mean, I should have just bought it for my future children and just said I'm going to save it for whatever small child can fit into this um, later. But anyway, good time. So if you made it this far in the podcast, congratulations. Are we done? Thank you so much. I think we're done. How long have we been talking? Five minutes. That's a long time. It's a long time. Let me... Hang on, clear jets over there, speed racer. Let me uh, just let me try something here. Okay, he's gonna look up like custom ink sweatshirts right now. I'm gonna do um. I'm pretty sure that we have a friend that like blast out sweatshirts. I'm not sure who, but but I'm sure we know somebody who could do that. Sweat shirt. It needs to be a hoodie. It needs to be a hoodie, right? No, that's not what I needed. Who do we know? That hang on, was... hang on. Stick with us here, folks. Okay, a screen printer. Um, I gotta go. A Rocco screen printer is actually pretty good. Right. I've, done, I've done some t shirts with them before. No, it's not out. Log into my, my pro account here. I do my face. You guys ever get annoyed by the amount of things you have to log out and log and log into on a regular basis? No. <laughs> it's so nope. keeping your information just you. secure. Just you, David. Just you. Just David. <laughs> I'm like Ron Swanson on Parks and Rec. I deeply value my um <laughs> my privacy sometimes, my personal um, information. Let's see. I've already said too much. I've already said too much. Library fan stuff stuff worn on their shirt. This is not really what I want. Mountain logo, your tagline. On the boat. This oh, oh hang on, I think I may have found a background and a text that I like. Hold the phone. Alright. Spell it for me, Jen. P R. Hold on. I think it was just <laughs> missing all the vowels. T R B. L M and then the next word was S L V R S, right? I was just missing the vowels. Or maybe it didn't have an S in my name, maybe it was just problem solver. You gotta put the S on it. Was it? Okay. Problem solvers. Problem did. solvers. Problem solvers. Problem solvers. So let's export this. <laughs> Look at the, look at the, look at the, just like that. Okay. Come on, how cool is that? That's pretty cool. So if you're looking on the right stories. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, I just hit the, okay. you know, just the bare bones. Okay, if you want to buy a sweatshirt, how much is said sweatshirt? Well, the cost on here is 34 bucks, so you probably need to charge, I mean, 50 bucks? I don't know. Let's see. Let's okay. Uh, done. Let's add in. Okay, okay. We're gonna work on this, and we'll get back to you guys. If you can keep the cost under forty. I think people would buy them. Yeah, I think forty bucks is is, is fair for a sweatshirt. Maybe forty five. It's pretty fair for a sweatshirt. Um, that's how much sweatshirts are these days? Yeah. Where how, are you buying sweatshirts? That's how much from? hoodies are. That's how much hoodies are. You know, inflation. Inflation is. Crazy. Inflation is a real thing, babe. Um, cost of a gallon of gas, cost of a tank of diesel is, is egregious. Okay. All right. You've now reached the super secret second ending post credit scene of the Team Carter Family Podcast. If you made it this far in the podcast, I want to say sincerely appreciate you listening. Thank you for every 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 second of time that you give us. We sincerely appreciate it. It's good hanging out with you. And we love you all. Peace. Bye.